and welcome to Long COVID Foundation podcast. This is the channel where we share educational information on Long COVID to help you get answers relevant to your symptoms. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe button because it will help me get answers relevant to your symptoms. And one more thing. Due to numbers of long haulers globally reach over 180 million to date, we want this channel to be more visible to everybody. So by simply liking and sharing our videos, you will help many out there. Our channel will be easier to find among the general YouTube search. So three simple things you can do to support our charity. Subscribe, like, and share. Thank you to all of you. The, the question is then more like, what are the real little nitty gritty mechanisms, especially in long COVID? And ask you to, to find out what can we do in the practical settings of, um, of advising or uh, the, the doctor uh, the doctors that are in our groups and, and the scientists to, to really identify the core mechanisms that fuel and maintain long COVID conditions or even cause them. So, the more causes we can take away and the more we can repair and the more we can restore, the higher the chance of people, people getting better. So we have been working some years already. So uh, the first thing you, you, uh, you, you comes to mind if somebody cannot eat organic. Okay, this can happen. I, myself also, you go on a business trip or you're, you're eating at work or circumstances don't allow you to really get good food and you will have to eat foods that contain glyphosate. Can you give us a quick rundown which kind of foods are the worst that should be avoided to buy them in, con in a conventional store or eat them in a restaurant, which are the most loaded with glyphosate? Yes, that's actually surprising because the ones that are coming up with the highest levels are, um, are not the GMO crops. So the GMO crops are contaminated with glyphosate, no question. That's the corn, the soy, sugar beets. Um, and um, uh, canola, canola oil, um, those are all gonna be contaminated, but there's a bunch of uh, crops in the major parts of the food industry that are sprayed right before harvest as a desiccant. They're not GMO, they're sprayed in order to kill the crop and cause it to go to seed, increase the yield. Maybe you're chasing a frost. And this is the wheat, the oats, um, the garbanzo beans, the chickpeas, barley, and um, lentils so all of these and then some of the seed crops as well like uh, sunflower seeds so these things are all going to be potentially very highly contaminated with glyphosate so those are really ones to watch out for because people often think if i just eat non-gmo i'll be okay and that is not true canada did a big study and they measured glyphosate levels in over eight thousand different foods both canadian and then imported from us from europe from mexico and um they uh a friend of mine published a book called Poison Foods of North America. And um, T Tony Mitra is his name. He's a Canadian citizen and he's been harassing his government to measure glyphosate in the food for a very long time. And they finally decided to do it. The United States doesn't bother to test for glyphosate. They know it's all over the food. They don't care because they think it's safe. Is there a list we can get um, somewhere on the internet with a, let's say, a rating? Right. And it's actually kind of hard to get. And I've looked hard for and occasionally you see some that are done for organizations like um, so Zen Honeycutt, for example, has found glyphosate in all the California wines. She also measured it in breast milk and found a third of the women. These were women who were eating well. One third of them tested positive for glyphosate in their breast milk. She's the one who tested also in vaccines. And Anthony Samsel also did that. Both of them found glyphosate. Anthony has found it in all kinds of strange places like bile acids and horses who have he's looking at he's he got a bone from a butcher a cow bone he found glyphosate at high levels in that bone he's found it in collagen and jello like uh, orange jello gelatin so um so it's it's in for it's definitely in gelatin and that's one thing you need to worry about because yes. that's got lots and lots of glycine and a lot of people are taking gel caps which probably have glyphosate embedded in the in those um, gel caps, um, which is con concerning if you're taking a lot of supplements, you could be getting a lot of glyphosate in your supplements. I think that's something we need to worry about as well. And nobody ever thinks about glyphosate in supplements, but you need to look for organic supplements, especially if you get supplementing glycine. You need to get organic glycine. Fruits have them, strawberries have glyphosate, uh, you know, and as I said, all the wines, 
uh, beer it has glyphosate and um, the Canadian government uh, you know did these 8,000 they found the highest levels in the US consistently much higher in the US and Canada than in Europe and Mexico lined up with Europe so if yeah. you can't buy organic buy Mexican which is sad Mexico is going to ban glyphosate very soon I don't know if it's 2023 or 2024 they are planning to completely ban it Good for them, you know, and I hope they will shame the U.S. into doing something similar. But maybe we want to give out a warning because many of the younger ladies in the long hauler community are vegan and they are replacing meat products with soy. Yes, that's very bad. Sources which are pretty contaminated coming from Argentina, where I know from the farmers there what is happening. So it's not hearsay. We know exactly how much they put on the fields every week. Or every, mm -hmm. or every month. And so, you know, that soy also goes into the biofuel that's delivered to Europe. Europe imports a lot of biodiesel from Argentina yeah. and it comes from that GMO Roundup Ready soy. I think the biodiesel in the in the cars in Europe may be a major contributor to the trouble they're having with COVID. Yeah, but to, to come back to that topic, if you now switch, you switch off from animal fats, you're switching away from fish oils, you're switching away from butter and other things that in your opinion, I know, um, are very beneficial for the human organism. And you switch over to a um, vegan diet. And by doing so, you are also having a product that is highly loaded with glyphosate. Yes, that's that right. That then cause the rest of the cascade to be triggered that leads to real, um, let's say, disbalanced mechanisms, to say the, the least. Absolutely. That's a very yeah. good point. So if you are vegan, then it's absolutely essential you go organic and try to get some other substitutes for oils and fats. I know that you're um, a very clear on the cholesterol issue and all these things which we see now playing out in, in long COVID, yeah? exactly these mechanisms. Yes. So in fact, you know, cholesterol, of course, has been considered to be a, something you want to avoid, which is completely wrong. But good. part of the problem with cholesterol is that it's sulfated in transit. It's one of those fat soluble uh, molecules that gets a sulfate attached to it. And once it has a sulfate attached to it, it's very, very useful because it goes mm -hmm. into the membranes of the red blood cells, of the lipid particles, the LDL, the HDL. It goes into the membranes and it protects them from glycation damage and, and from um, oxidation damage. So it's really, really important cholesterol sulfate in the blood. It's deficient because glyphosate is disrupting the ability to attach the sulfate. Now you have cholesterol, which just like other fat soluble molecules can become toxic to the liver. If you've got cholesterol in the liver and you can't sulfate it, that's a problem. So I think that the issue with cholesterol has to do with the lack of ability to sufficiently sulfate it. So for anybody that is struggling to come back to a normal life and leading and, and suffering from long COVID, um, is they're taking a lot of supplements, they're taking a lot of medications, they're doing a lot of treatments with aphoresis and God knows what, uh, even gymnastics, yoga, all that is fine. But if your underlying food and your underlying nutrition is compromised, let's put it mildly, then the, it will be more difficult to come back to normal. So the advice is not only on what you eat, but also on what kind of quality of food you take. And so now for bread, pizza, pasta, garbanzo, lentils, and staple foods, if anybody can afford, go organic if Absolutely. possible. Absolutely. And if not possible, then we, you know that we've been working now some years on a new product that will come out in a while and I'll put it out for cost price, I don't care. It is a high molecular humic acid that in, in, in uh, humic acid is something like a precursor to um, brown coal, coal like a, like a coal kind of soil substance and that can chelate and has been patented to chelate the glyphosate out of the gut. We did have some doctors, smart guys, they say, yeah, but if you have the glyphosate is integrated as a glycine analog, like a substitute in some proteins that you eat, like in meat or fish, then how do you get, to, how do you get to it? But it will be broken up by your stomach acid and it will be broken up into single amino mm -hmm. acids and then you can catch the glyphosate and uh, that has been clinically proven and you can take out a large part of that glyphosate out of your intestines and get it out of your body so that would be a, 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 i think a, a smart thing to do and then 
the next question was like all the other chain of event that we've been looking at now together for several years as is first of all the um, decrease in beneficial bacteria that is also for example producing butyrate the mm -hmm. same thing happens in covid and long covid mm -hmm. so you see there the same pattern so it's a double whammy and yeah i'd like to say something about butyrate because it's quite yeah, interesting that yeah. the microbes that make the butyrate depend upon an acidic environment and because glyphosate disrupts the metabolism of the proteins, you get these peptides that come through the mid gut and go into the lower gut as peptides. And now you have these, you can no longer absorb those amino acids. So you have uh, microbes that uh, develop in the gut to break those peptides down into individual amino acids, but then they have to be fully metabolized to ammonia because they cannot be absorbed. So you end up with extra microbes that are able to break down the amino acids and produce ammonia and ammonia causes the gut pH to go up. And when the gut pH is too high, the butyrate making that bacteria disappear. And it's been shown in uh, studies with glyphosate that it raises the, the gut pH and it depletes the supply of acetate and, and butyrate at the same time. And so I think that's a lot of what's going on with the, with the gut and that those uh, short chain fatty acids are really important. The, um, the colonocytes love butyrate. That's their favorite food. And they're not getting enough because of this disruption by glyphosate. No, I mean, you have it both. You have that happening with glyphosate and you have it happening with uh, SARS-CoV-2, as we have seen in the last uh, Congress, where it was clearly proven that the bacteria SARS-CoV-2 as a virus infects gut bacteria directly and replicates in this bacteria. That's amazing. And, 